Sustainability Week is starting around the world in Pokemon Go, and as always, I wanna get you guys up to speed for this event, so let's get right into it. So this event is gonna be April 22nd, 10 a.m. to April 26th at 8 p.m. your local time. We'll see the bonuses of your buddy Pokemon bringing you more souvenirs and presents, which are those little green things they bring you that get you the extra heart. Buddies will also spend more time on the map after being fed berries or poffins, so they'll stay active for longer, which is cool. And the distance you have to walk to get your buddy walking hearts will be halved. Making this a great event to get buddies. We'll talk about it in a bit. We'll see Pokestop exclusive showcases during the event where you can enter event themed Pokemon. Now in terms of spawn, there's no exclusive ones with this event, but this event does go along with the Rediscover Kanto update, which is part of the Rediscover Pokemon Go update. So most likely you can expect some Kanto Pokemon like potentially Pidgey, Meowth, you know, the starters, Ghastly, some stuff here on the graphic that they have. Expect those to be spawning in the wild during this event. We'll also see in two kilometer eggs going down during the event, Combi, Drillbert, Trubbish, Fungus, and Binnacle. And all five of these Pokemon from the eggs are gonna have an increased shiny odds from hatching eggs, probably like a one in 64 to one in 128. So if you do wanna get any of these shinies, hatch them through the two Ks. As far as raids go during the event, we don't really know what the ones and two stars are gonna be, but we do have Tapu Bulu in the five star raids going down until the 25th, then switching into Reggie Steel raids. And then for the mega raids, we have Mega Heracross going down until April 25th, switching into Mega Agron. Also, this event is going to mark the release of the new long awaited map update where you can see the different biomes. I'll put some footage of it on screen, but Pokemon Go is finally getting a visual update and you will see different Pokemon in different environments depending on the biome you're in, if you're near the water and all that stuff. All that will start during this event. Hey guys, Dax of the Future here and we got some exclusive research during the event as well. Starting with the field research task, you'll see the task catch five Pokemon for a Binnacle encounter, catch 10 Pokemon for a Fungus encounter, hatch an egg for a Combi encounter, explore one kilometer for a Trubbish encounter and explore two kilometers for a Drillbur encounter. Specifically, those Funguses, Combis and Trubbishes all get you boosted status per catch. So I'd actually recommend saving onto these Pokemon running when you do encounter them from field research. Hold onto them for a two or three times catch stars event and then you can catch them then and you'll get even more stars because it, like Trubbish gets you 750 for example. There'll also be exclusive collection challenge you can check out on screen. One where you have to catch a Drillbur and evolve it and one catch a Trubbish and evolve it. So pretty easy stuff to do. Get some Stardust XP. Pretty good stuff there. With the event details of the way, let's get right into the tips. Two kilometer eggs during this event. And I want to talk about if they're actually going to be worth going after or not. In terms of the best Pokemon to hatch from the two kilometer eggs, we do have Drillbur in there which evolves into Excadrill. Extra Drill does see play in the Master League and is also a pretty good ground type ray attacker. So definitely not a bad Pokemon to grab by any means. We also have Binnacle in there, which evolves into Barbarical, which is decent in some limited Great League Cups, but that's really about it. So overall, unless you need any of these shinies from the two kilometer eggs, they're actually not the greatest in terms of meta relevance to go after. So yeah, I would potentially avoid them. But I will say is we do have the hatch day going down on the April 28th for Cleffa. So what you can do for these two kilometer eggs is stack them up. And then before the hatch day starts, since they're only two kilometer eggs, try to hatch them all as quick as you can so you have open spaces for when the hatch day does start and you can quickly fill up your egg slots and hatch a lot of those hatch day Pokemon. Now the best thing to do during this event is probably going to actually be to best buddy Pokemon because we have a lot of buddy focused bonuses. Buddy staying longer on the map, less walking to get your buddy heart. So I quickly want to go through the one and a half hour get your buddy excited for free method in Pokemon Go for anyone who doesn't know how it works. Pretty much the strategy is as falls. You're going to start feeding your buddy a berry, playing with your buddy, taking a snapshot with your buddy and then going ahead and battling a team leader with your buddy. Then you're gonna go ahead and set a 30 minute timer on your phone and then do the exact same thing when that 30 minute timer sets off. Battle, play, feed, and uh, take a snapshot of them. You're gonna do that total of four times and you're gonna have a buddy excited for completely free. If you wanna know why this is, is because there's like this secret emotion point system that works in the background. I'm gonna link below a video if you wanna go more in depth on it, but follow that strategy. It's gonna be a great strategy to use because you're gonna be getting quicker hearts when walking through their buddy. So if you're really working on getting a lot of best buddies, you can get your buddies excited for completely free and they get their hearts, um, the walking hearts for pretty easy during this event. Oh, and you'll also be getting more souvenirs and gifts and all this stuff. So yeah, working on buddies during this event, a great great thing to do. If you want to know what the best Pokemon to best buddy in Pokemon Go are as well, we'll link below the video up here and down below where you can check that out if you're really considering what Pokemon you want to best buddy. Also, I do think it's worth a mention. There's actually Trubbish Spotlight Hour going down on April 23rd from 6 to 7 p.m. Trubbish actually gets you 750 base Stardust per catch. That's going to be 1,125 on a star piece. So during that Spotlight Hour, definitely go ahead and play it if 
you can. You're being a lot, a lot of Stardushes. Catching like 100 Trebuches is like 100,000 Stardust on a star piece. So definitely do not skip that event. Now I do want to quickly run through my candy tips before this event starts, how to get a lot of candy for the different Pokemon in the wild and the research, et cetera, et cetera. First of all, use Pineapp Berries on Pokemon. Regular Pineapp Berries will multiply your catch candy by two and Silver's by 2.34. You can also go ahead and use Spatial Ren. Spatial Ren is an ability that will cost Palkia candies and Stardust, but it will double the distance in which you can see spawns and allow you to see spawns from further catch more Pokemon, get more candy. Good stuff. You can also mega evolve a Pokemon. If you don't know when you mega evolve a Pokemon, any Pokemon you catch that shares a type with that mega, you'll get more candy, XP, XL candy, all that stuff. So you definitely want to have a mega mega evolve during this event. Overall, I'm not going to lie, there's not really one great mega to mega evolve during this event. So when that does happen, I generally mega evolve either a Primal Kyogre, a Primal Groudon, or a Mega Rayquaza, because those are the Pokemon that will hit three different types. I'm going to get the most. So again, I'm probably going to go with a Primal Groudon, but let me know in the comments what mega you'll be mega evolving. You can also go ahead and transfer Pokemon. The month of May is coming up, which which means a two times transfer candy spotlight hour is just around the corner. Don't know what they are going to be yet, but stay tuned to the community tab of the channel where I'll post a graphic when we get the next spotlight hours for the next month. And you can know when you can hold on to your Pokemon until and then transfer during a two times transfer candy event to get two times the amount of candy. And finally, you can go ahead and trade Pokemon. If you don't know when you trade away a Pokemon, you're going to get one regular candy. But if the distance seen where those two Pokemon were caught is over 100 kilometers, you're going to get a guaranteed XL candy and two regular candies. So if you save a bunch of the research tasks, or the eggs you hatch of drill burrs, for example. You can hold on to those drill burrs, find a friend with some distance Pokemon, mirror trade a bunch of those, and get a bunch of extra candies and XL candies for drill burr, which are very, very useful candies to have. And finally, I want to talk about platinum metal tips. You need 35 platinum metals go from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go. I want you guys to get on it now because it's not really easy to get these metals right away. So which ones can we focus on during this event? Obviously, the type metals, you know, you can catch those drill burrs. So the Rune Maniac metal will be a great one to go ahead and work on. Or any of the spawns from the Kanto bonus. Just again, any of these metals you haven't finished. If you see that Pokemon type in the wild, catch it. We do have those two kilometer eggs during the event. So the breeder metal hatched 2,500 eggs. Not a bad one to work on. The 2K eggs are really, really easy to hatch since it's only two kilometers. You can work on this metal. And finally, of course, the showcase star metal win 100 Pokestop showcases. Exclusive showcases going down during this event. So you can go ahead and work on those to work on this metal. Again, I always recommend going out to the less busy areas, drop into showcases there. There's going to be less competition, higher chance of you winning. Guys, if you enjoyed that video, watch the one below. I know the sustainability week, kind of a mid event. I'm not going to lie. Definitely a skippable one but it is cool. We're finally getting some of these uh, biome updates and different updates coming to Pokemon Go. So kind of take a chill, get ready for May. It should be a good month of Pokemon Go. Follow for tips. Peace.